Hey guys! Hello! Oh my word. <laughs> Salutations so, and greetings to a lovely Wednesday morn. Yeah, it's that time of week again. Yes. And uh, this week we're going to be doing things a little bit differently because that is the lens that's normally on this camera. That is a 28mm uh, 2. Point, uh, it says 2.8 over here. Yeah, 2.8 f prime lens that we normally use on this uh, 500D. And uh, this week uh, we got uh, another lens, yep. one that goes from 28 up to 80 mm -hmm. for some zoom action. Yep. Um, that won't be so useful uh, with the Robo Jib, but in the meantime, since we've been using the camera a lot for other things, uh, we thought we'd like to have something a little bit more flexible. So you guys are looking right now through this new lens. Not really new. We buy vintage lenses, FD mount lenses, uh, from the 70s and 80s, mm -hmm. and an adapter to get them on this camera. It's a Correct. really cheap way to get some really nice lenses. Correct. -o. So these lenses are like $20 each for us. That helps the show budget go a lot farther. Yes. All right, uh, I'm going to switch these lenses out and let you guys see the new one. Okay, here's looking at you, babe. <laughs> So yeah, it's 28 to 80. Um, it says auto zoom, but you know, FD lenses to an EOS mount, no auto anything, which is fine for video. Kind of a hefty one. Isn't We've it? got uh, aperture control on this ring. We've got uh, zoom from, like we said, 28 to 80. We've got focus on this big one, nice and beefy. Uh -huh. And we have an infinite focus. FD to uh, EOS uh, adapter, and uh, that allows us to get to infinity. Now, are we going to be using this on our road trip to Parallax? Yes, we are making a road trip through like seven cities out to California and back. Who's that? We're going to see a lot of you guys in person. Yep. And uh, yeah, we're heading out to Parallax headquarters in Rockland, California yep. for their yearly expo. April 13th and to 14. We'll be bringing this with us and shooting some video and hopefully recording some podcasts with some of you guys' as guests. Indeed. All right, let's get to the show. And now for casting epoxy class with Hattie, where we use easy cast clear casting epoxy. Oh, I don't, I don't, what, what? Now what's that? <laughs> easy cast clear casting epoxy. I tried to look for some at Home Depot, but they didn't have it. Can you pull them out? Yes, I can. There's two bottles, and when you put them together, they form this awesome viscous fluid. And after like a couple resin hours, magic stuff. Yes, after a couple of hours, uh, magic. All right. So, so why the heck do you have that stuff? Uh, because I want to make a cool heart pendant that will uh, show off. Oh, the, so this is part of your uh, the heart, heart project uh, LED flashing, actual like nerdy nurse right. uh, cardiovascular right uh, accurate timing mojo right okay correct so so uh, I have a couple of variations I'll show you guys one finished variation that just has two LEDs in it um, but I have a couple of them curing right now so this one uh, so first you mix these two and in this handy dandy thing we call a Tupperware plus another handy dandy thing we call a chopstick um, I don't use this chopstick to eat anymore, don't worry. That's just like kinda... really high-tech stuff there. Oh, I know. It's the fancy stuff. You're such a hacker. What can I say? Um, so then I mix them, I kind of eyeball how much there is, you know, of each because you need um, a one-to-one -one ratio. And then I just pour it into these cute little candy molds that I uh, found online, obviously. Um, what is that a mold of? A heart. Like an anatomically correct heart. Why would anybody want a candy making mold in the shape of an antenna? And that's gross. Well, for Halloween and such. Uh, I've seen worse. I've seen brains. It's gross. So you're Zombies using it, but... basically a jello mold yep. to make hearts. Clear hearts with LEDs inside of them? Correct. And actually, my newest rendition has fiber optics in them. You're, you're putting fiber optics inside of your cast hearts. Yes, yes. So To pipe the light to where... What were those things you were talking about? The, the... cardiac conduction pathway. Ah. Uh, yeah. So this one is actually... I have one more sl small layer to cast on it, but the ventricular and the atrial 
fiber optics are all in there. So awesome. Yes. Well, we'll get a close-up view of that cast here. Okay. So uh, here's one that actually oh, don't is touch it. in it's still curing. process of curing here. Yeah. And it's got what is that fiber optic cables inside of it? Uh huh. Yep. Very interesting. I found some cheap uh, fiber optics, and they came in like they were like stranded essentially, and so I just used the strands inside of them to uh, make the cardiac conduction. And it looks like you've still got some layers of epoxy to add to this. I have one more. Yep. Awesome. Yep. All right. So we'll see how Very that goes. Very cool. Let's let's see how it's working. Okay. Okay. So just to show it working, I burned it to the EEPROM. And I took away that LCD screen that was there before. And what you see is two white LEDs uh, acting as the um, sinal atrial node and the atrioventricular node. And then there's a switch underneath it. Let me see if I can get to it. Oh yeah, that's for switching between the different uh, heart rhythms. Yep. That does not look healthy. <laughs> All right, cool. I think we should get a close-up of that for everybody. And there we have it. Close-up, and I believe this is sinus tachycardia. And those LEDs are like white ones that are like embedded inside that heart. Uh -huh. So if you're like at a party, yeah, it'll totally look cool, awesome. <laughs> you're hanging this off of some sort of uh, a pendant, you said? Yep. And the switch will be somehow attached to it. We have yet to work well, I've started work on the schematic, um, and hopefully... Oh, yeah, because you, you're building an actual board right into it, too, aren't you? Right, and hopefully Whisker will be able to uh, get on. You can't the... even see Isn't those that cool? LEDs. Yeah. They just disappear into that epoxy. Yeah. That is so cool. This is going to be a really great project. Cool. All right. Very cool. Thank you. All right, so what's this thingy? Well, we've been get, getting a whole bunch of peripherals from... Uh, Parallax, and one of them was the RC servo. And so I wanted to figure out how to get an RC servo to work and how to code it up. And uh, so I, I couldn't quite figure out how to screw the little ro rotor or propeller thingy to the servo. Oh, the servo horn? Yeah. I'd, okay. I couldn't get figure that out, but we did have another another type of or another servo on the Bobot. Okay, so that's which, a propeller board of education, which will be released soon. Correct. And this is the Basic Stamp Two board of education, the old one. Ah. And this is a board of education robot base called a Bobot. So Bobot, Bow, Prop, Bow. So right. B O E. That's the family. Yeah. So um. Just to let you guys know, these are Futaba serv servos, and uh, the white line is the signal, so the pulse with modulation well, they're, signal. They're parallax servos, but they're compatible with a they're, typical oh, Futaba. Futaba, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I just saw in parentheses Futaba, so I assumed. But um, so the white line is, the white wire is for uh, the pulse with modulation signal. The red is for power, and the black is for ground. So all I did was I put in a, a few extending wires um, from the RC servo. Actually connect them to your header. Right, to put into, I believe this is 5 volts uh, ground, and the signal is coming in on pin 0. So a few things, details to note here is that um, your you're using a continuous rotation servo, right? Not is... a 90 or 180 degree servo. Correct. That's important. Right. And also that um, most microcontroller boards would not be able to drive that servo right off of a pin. It right. doesn't. It wouldn't be able to source enough current. Right. But the new prop BOE there has um, built into its regulated input power supply mm -hmm. section. A, uh, a VIN that can actually source a much higher amount of current right so that when you run the servo it doesn't uh, brown out your board right and actually on this board there are essentially three different power sources uh, there's one from USB one for 3.3 volts and one for 5 volts um, and so when I ran the code uh, through its programming well port, let's be accurate you got your USB you can power it that way you can power it through a wall wart oh, between, between 
Well, those are after the regulator, the ones that you're looking at. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you can power it through the wall wart. Yeah. And that's anywhere between like six to nine volts. Right. Or you could just jack a nine volt battery or a battery pack onto the oh, nine volt two. battery terminals right, right there. Right. The problem with the USB is that it can't sync much current. Right. And actually, so when I was coding, when I was uh, getting the code onto the EEPROM for this shot, uh, I noticed that with just USB power, the servo wasn't working correctly. All right, that would be because your servo is drawing too much mm -hmm. current, mm -hmm. and that browns out the prop, which causes it to restart. Oh, that's pretty fast. Which will cause <laughs> uh, very, very strange bugs to occur. Right, and it just kept going continuously. But by plugging it into the wall, it works fine. Right, and so the code I have here um, is different than the code in the PDF provided by Propeller because. The code provided in the PDF by Propeller actually doesn't work. Yeah, uh, so. the best guess that anybody has is that the person who um, put the, the example code for continuous rotation mm -hmm. just translated the code from um, basic. The, the basic stamp language yep. over into Propeller and didn't really check their work. Yep. And it doesn't work. Yep. So Addie, being the excellent badass <laughs> coder that she is, actually yeah. wrote her own continuous rotation servo driver. Correct. So uh, it's pretty much just my making it go, I think it's clockwise, then counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, ad infinitum. Okay. Right, but do, didn't you get it to the point where you could stop it, then it strikes too? Yes, I did. It's actually kind of difficult. Is it? Well, you, as long as you know how it works, not so much, but I guess to do true. it yourself from scratch. Right. So the interesting about this pulse with modulation, especially for servos, is that um, if, it, uh, how should I explain this? So each direction um, has a particular pulse width. Uh, so if you want it to go, if you want it to stay and stop, then it's 1.5 milliseconds. If you want it to go, I believe clockwise, it's 1.3 milliseconds. And if you want it to go counterclockwise, it's 1.7 milliseconds. And between each of these, uh, pulse widths that determine which direction it goes, you have to have 20 milliseconds worth of time. So I'm just going to show a demonstration, right? Yep. Okay. I'm going to turn it on. Clockwise, stop. Counterclockwise, stop. Clockwise, stop. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So yay, it works. Good job. Thank you. I see Churchill. Well, yeah. What's he up, what's he up to today? I'm uh, using him as a power supply to drive a big DC motor. I see. How come? Well, um, as you guys know, we're working on a gigantic robotic camera jib for the new studio. Uh huh. So that uh, the camera you're looking through right now can actually swing around the studio by itself. Correct. Um, there's a lot of motors involved in that, uh, servos, steppers, um, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff. But this is the main drive that swings the entire thing back and forth. Okay. It's a very powerful 24 volt uh, worm gear uh, DC motor. Okay. But it needs to swing left and right. So a uh, good friend of the show, John S.A.Z. over at Hackers Bench TV. Mm -hmm. um, designed an H-bridge circuit for it that can switch high current um, polarity one way than the other way. Okay. So, um, but it also has a bunch of protection logic in here. Right. There's uh, uh, end switches so that when the jib gets to one side or the other side, it automatically cuts it off. Okay. And uh, the, the control pins from the microcontroller that will be con um, controlling it would be the direction pin here, mm -hmm. the pulse width modulation pin here, mm -hmm. the um, and then you're just giving it uh, uh, logic levels, um, ground and positive here. Okay. So basically you're controlling with just two wires, the pulse width and the direction. The direction is set to either clockwise or counterclockwise and then you pulse the pulse width pin on and off to control the speed of the motor. We're not um, to the point where we're doing pulse width yet, but pulse width is built into the circuit, it'll work. We just haven't hooked it to the microcontroller yet, but I wanted to demonstrate to you guys um, that we've got the, the motor spinning in both directions. Okay. Right now, 
I've got the pulse width grounded so that it will not spin. If I let go of it, it spins counterclockwise. Uh huh. Addie stuck some paper on it so you guys can <laughs> see it better. And if I uh, ground this direction pin, it'll actually uh, change to being clockwise. Gotcha. And then pulse width is doing this sort of thing, but much, 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 much faster to right. control the speed. Right. So I can stop it, change the direction. Now it's going counterclockwise. Cool. All righty. Yep. That's awesome. So that is a lot of progress. Thank you, John, thank for you, helping out you. with this. We very much appreciate it. Yeah. Um, if you want this design, John has put it up. And uh, it's in our forums, tymkaris.com slash forum. Correct. Slash forum. No forum, S. yeah. All right. Okay. I think that's it. Good update. Yeah. So uh, thank you, everybody, for watching yeah. uh, this uh, weekly edition of Toymaker Television. Yeah. You can catch this show every week on Wednesdays. And uh, also, don't forget to check out our podcasts, firstspin.tv and zombietech.tv. Uh huh. And, uh, and for any more details on our projects, you can check out tymkrs.com slash forum. Yep. Uh, we have a chat room where we chat every single day. Yes. Uh, lots and lots and lots of smart people in there. Come join us, hang out. Indeed. Uh, we can help you do your projects. You can help us do ours. That's kind of how it works. And there's also some forums there. Everything's linked from tymkrs.com. We'll see you guys next Wednesday. Bye. Bye. We post videos all the time, so don't forget to subscribe. And follow us on Twitter at tymkrs.